And with steel blue eye. Well, that one looked like a button. One screwed in and one screwed out. You had to be very careful. Her vision depended on it. She only came out once every eight months. Looked around. Saw that her eyes were screwed in and screwed out right. Took a little walk. Whistled through her toes. And with all three hands on her hips, went back in for another eight months. I don't know how she did that. She must have had a pipeline to a store because she ate regularly, had to eat just like we do. Only one thing was crazy about that woman. She had to drink rusty water. Oh, she had all the kids in the neighborhood running after rusty water. Hmm? Funny. One of nature's mistakes. One of nature's mistakes. Wire hair, she had, yes. Animals couldn't get near her. Their backs went up, stiff, they grimaced. They, uh, oh, I'm sorry, have another cup. Have another cup. Would you like something a little bit stronger? Either. At first we were all afraid of her. All afraid of her. All the kids had to stay home. Couldn't pass her house. Then we dug a fallout shelter. And everybody that passed her house had to go down into the fallout shelter and out. Take a shower before they came out. But that was ridiculous. She was, was not radioactive. I knew that from the beginning. There too long. Besides, we all watched her grow up. She's only young, you know. She was a baby. As a baby, she had little wire hairs. I know. And she was put together in three in sections of three. Very nice girl. Oh, very nice girl. No one ever saw her mad. God knows what would happen if she got mad. Huh? I'd hate to have her point at me. Well, yes, her fingers lit up. Little sparks flew. Yes, her toes too. She couldn't wear shoes. No. She wore scooped out cement blocks. I know, very heavy. That's why she was so tired. Her name? Oh, Valeria Strumpet. Strump, not Strump. No. Oh, very funny. Well, Valeria was an old Roman goddess, I guess, or an old, at least she was a princess or a queen. I know the Strumpets were normal. Normal pair. Can you imagine having an electric monster like that? Poor Valeria. No, nobody knew her well enough to call her Val. Sad, isn't it? All through life, Valeria, without a nickname. Such a waste, somehow. Oh, yes, tongues wag in this town. They wag, yes. From the highest banker right down to the lowliest sweeper in the tradesman's store. Tongues wag. Yes, they do. And they've got a lot to wag about. Hmm. Well, take old Mrs. Smith Bronson. She's got a secret. About her son. He has hands and elbows and arms, and no wrists. She tries to hide this fact. I don't know. What's the secret? Behind Mrs. Smith Bronson's son's wrist. I don't know. I don't know. 
Then there's old Luke Harding. Yes. Runs the dairy in town. Calls it butter. Hmm. That's not butter. It's yellow grease. Why well, expect? We've all watched it. We all sat out there one day. He didn't know. Took notes. Took pictures. Yellow grease, not butter. Mm hmm. Maud Slarna runs that little beauty parlor. Hmm. You thought it was a beauty parlor. Well, what do you suppose goes on there after hours? Certainly. Maud the madam. Hmm. Beautician. Oh. No, sir. Then that poor little girl they pilloried. You know who started that? Yes, Henrietta Wacklocker. She started it. Henrietta Wacklocker. Why? That little girl was pretty, that's why. Henrietta had a head like a mole. Yes! She wouldn't have it. She wouldn't have it. Mm. Little Mary Mensa. Drove her right out of town. Drove her out of town. Said she was one of Maud's girls. Well, now, nobody'd have that. Nobody'd have that. So, drive her out of town, drive her out of town. Wang, boo! Pilloried. Oh, she was a pilloried girl. Yes. But Henrietta? Mmm, she guarded her secrets. Guarded them. She had been married 28 times. Now, how do you figure that out? A cool million? She settled on each husband. One night. Well, Henrietta had a secret. Ha! Twenty-eight nights she had of married life. Ha ha ha! All left her. They all left her. Took the cool million and flew. Left her with one. Yes, why did she pillory Mary? Ha! Huh, Mary Mansa was pretty. Henrietta was ugly. Oh, uh, an ugly woman. Huh. Then there was Vern Spall. Old Vern Spall. Yes, he ran the mortician shop. Mm. Some say, well, I don't like to say it. Well, he did a very good job. He used to prop the body up in the window. Now, how's that? Just like a doll. He put the body up in the window, and people would go by, and they'd say, Oh, my God, there's Andy Fletchin. Look at that Andy Fletchin. We didn't even know he died. Oh, uh, well, what was his secret? He drank the blood. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, vampirism in our town. Oh. Terrible town, 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 get out of terrible town. Yes, get out of terrible town. Go into Lovelyville. Lovelyville next door, they don't have our secrets. Yes, we're going to rope off terrible town. Oh, Lovelyville, here we all come. Let me in. Let me out of this place. Oh, here they come, here they come. They are chasing me out of this place. I am running toward lovely now. Hello, lovely girl, here I come. Lovely girl, hug, hit the patina, hug the patina, hit the patina. Well, that Well, certainly you have to bring them. You have to bring a gift. It's a birthday party, stupid. Well, naturally, what do you think? You can't go to a birthday party without bringing a gift. Honestly, for a child of three, you can be so dense. Naturally. Yes. 
course. I don't care. You bring a gift of your own choosing. No, you don't. No, you. I'm sorry now. You know better than that. You know better than that. You have been brought up better than that. No, you know you don't trade a gift. No, when you give your little birthday gift, you do not get one in return. I know it's your birthday. Do they know it's your birthday? Well, then how do you expect them to think that... <laughs> what makes you think they're going to get you a little gift? You don't want a handkerchief or a tie anyway. Yes, you have all the socks you need. Now, now come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't plague me. Don't plague me. It's time for you to go to that little birthday party. Now, get your little gift ready. Get it ready. Certainly. Pink paper or blue paper? Well, is it a boy or a girl? You never did tell me. Doesn't make a difference. That little gun will fit either one. Now, remember, don't point it when you give it to her. Or him. Her? Don't point it when you give it to her. That's right. You just say, Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday. What's your name? Vera. Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday, Vera. Yes. And aren't you unfortunate to be born the day before Christmas? Yes. Can you remember all that? Very well. No, I doubt whether she'll have one for you. I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Okay, now. Oh, now, Vernon? I'm speaking to you, Vernon. Put on your little coat. Put on your little coat and take your little present and go to that little birthday party. Vernon! Say it. What are you going to say? Merry Christmas and happy birthday, Vera. Oh, yes. Vera from Vernon. Yes, certainly. Of course I will. You really are very backward for three. Why don't you print it yourself? You print very nicely. I think you're lazy, Vernon. Vernon, you're lazy. Uh, Claire! Would you come here a minute? I have to tend to this all the time. I'm not going to take him down if I have to get him dressed and print his little cards for him. Yes. What? Honey, why don't you run him down there? Well, you know the little girl's mother. Vera, her name is. Yes. Sweltingham. Vera Sweltingham. Naturally. Uh, sweltering them. Uh, they get more complicated as the years go by. I can remember when he was one years old. One year old. One years old. One year old. I remember when he was one year old. Do you remember that little party we took him to? Bertha Lou Lumpke? That's easier. Vera sweltering him. Huh? Is she English by any chance? Uh, I said, is she English? Oh, Claire, you getting deaf? Vernon, don't take your coat off. Mommy will be with you in a minute. Oh. No. Of course it's not loaded. It's what? Bang, I'm dead! Love little starch picnics. We're having a starch dinner. Mm hmm. 33 kinds of potato. All the rice you can eat. Yes. Mm hmm. Beans. Lima beans. And Boston baked beans, yes. Mm hmm. How did that pork get in there? Pork is not starch. Oh, and dumplings. Yes, we had dumplings. 
biscuit that would sink a horse. You may bring the spaghetti on then. Yes. Oh. Very well then. Trade it in for a lasagna. Look at that lasagna. Oh my, have you ever seen such a creation? It's a starch creation. 23 layers. 23 layers in that lasagna. It's a starch masterpiece. Yes, it is. Well, it's pimples and poundage. Yenny Strubmeyer, a Chinese Austrian dwarf. I remember her, she sat in front of me. Yenny, oh, she used to write out our themes for us. Mmm, every one of us in the class. She used to write out 68 themes every time we had to write a theme, and in different handwriting, 68 different styles of handwriting. Now, Peony had it made. You know, she was the cleverest thing. Wonder what ever happened to her. I must look her up someday. But 68 themes, do you know that teacher never caught on? She was the stupidest teacher. But poor Peony, she had red-rimmed blue eyes when next day. My God, give us a theme to do. We had a theme to do once a week. Once a week, Peony wrote 69 themes. Well, her own. Can you imagine? Now that's something. Everyone on a different subject, everyone with a different style. That teacher would call to us. She'd say, Jim Strand. And Jim Strand would get up. She'd say, uh, half the time, you know, he hadn't even read his theme. Kenny passed them out as we were going into school. There she'd stand. She got under the stairs and her little hand would come up. She, tapped, she knew who we were just by our taps on the street. That's right. She knew. She knew. She never made a mistake. Edwina Rockby? Well, my dear. She could hear Edwina Rockby coming. Yes. She had a wooden leg. Poor Edwina. Poor Edwina. A crocodile bit her leg off in Florida on her vacation. Can you imagine? Well, she went to one of those damn serpent farms. Yes, and she got too friendly with the crocodile, and he nipped her leg off right at the thigh. So she always heard Edwina when she was coming, but she always had Edwina's themes ready. Yes, she was fun, that little Edwina. Boy, she could dance. Dance on that wooden leg hot dog. But do you know? <laughs> she used to sit in class and whittle her leg. Yes, she'd whittle away at her leg. She had to have a new peg out. Oh, well, uh, once every three months, she'd have to get a new leg. She'd whittle it away. I don't know whether it was nerves. She used to make little fancy carving. Yeah, we all had souvenirs. I still have Edwina. Edwina Rossi's little. Yes, yeah, she made me a little pot. She made a little pot for me. Yes, yeah, I still have it. I still have it. Sure. My wife wonders what it is, but. Oh, I don't tell her it's Edwina Rotby. Why should I tell her? Why should I tell her? If she thought that was somebody's wooden leg, she'd throw it out. She'd be subdued. Of course she would. You know, I, I was listening to her mother once. Do you know Edwina didn't even cry when that crocodile popped off her leg? She didn't even cry, Edwina. She was fascinated. Just fascinated. And her mother fainted dead away, and her father fainted dead away. Half the attendants fainted dead away, and Edwina just stood there and watched him chew up her leg. She was just so fascinated. And you know what? She said she always wanted to be Long John Silver. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> she was quite a card. Well, anyway, when Edwina came, Penny, her little arm shot up from under the stairs and gave her hers. Only once did Peony make a mistake? Well, she gave Carl, Natter, a little theme, How I Lost My Leg, and it was meant to go to Edwina. Well, Edwina got one, How I Burned My Fingers, and that, of course, was Carl Natter. Yeah! Well, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. They stood up, and then they, they just told the teacher, Well, we... 
We put our, I put myself in Carl's place, said Edwina, and, and Carl said, yes, he said, I, I wrote my theme from Edwina's point of view, and they both got A's. Well, it was swell. It was swell. So, I guess it didn't turn out too bad after all. They were the only two A's in the class. The rest of us got B+. Plus. Hmm. Penny, she forgot to turn hers in. Pay close heed. You sit outside here, in this outer office now, Helen. And, oh, within 10 minutes it'll all be over. I'll come out and get you, then you'll know, okay? Okay. Hi. Hi, Ben. Julie. Sam. Sally. Raj. Ed. Don. Okay, now let's make this quick. Let's make this quick. I think it should be a double. So it's... Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 13. Fifteen of us. Each take a slip of paper and write a number from one to fifteen. Throw it there in the middle in that big bowl. That's it. Now, everybody write an object. An object. Chair. Well, we better make it plural. Make it plural. Chairs. Doors, rocks, stoves, bushes, so on. Each one write one and th throw it in that second bowl on the table. Everybody write one. Okay, fold it up. Put it in the second bowl. Okay. Now let the little lady in, let the little lady in. Now, Helen, we want you to reach into that first ball. Reach into the first ball. You pick out a number. Okay. Twelve. Yes. Okay, now reach into the second one. Pick one of those. That's, that's it. Trees. Twelve trees. That's your name then. Helen Twelve Trees. Oh, uh, that's it. That's it. It's got to be that. It's got to be that. I'm sorry. We can't change it again. We decided this was the only way. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. You'll be a big star. I know. I. Yeah. It's got. To, it, it's got to catch on. The public will love it. The public will love it. We'll make a million. We'll make a million. Yes. Very good. Well, my God, 12 trees. 12 trees. Oh, still, I suppose it's better than 11 tables. Hell in 11 tables. Well, still a damn good idea. Helen, four doors. <laughs> Helen, three chairs. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Send Rochelle in next. We gotta find one for her. His name is Nigel Berger. Nigel Berger. Oh, it's not a hard name to remember. Get a little card. Put it down on a card. He sells glass swimming pools. If you ever need one, come to him for a glass swimming chair. Nigel Ber Oh, Nigel Berger! Oh, that's funny. I thought Nigel Berger was his last name. Nigel Berger.
Welcome to Mr. Berger. If you need a glass swimming pool. Mm. Yes. Boy says he's got them. He has them in a big room. They fit one into the other. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is take them out, cart them over, plant them in the ground. Nigel Berger. Sure, there's one in here. There's one in the sample pool. It's always, always busy. You want to go down? He keeps it in the back of his house. Nudge! We're going back to look at your pool. Oh, there are. Looks like there are a lot of people in here. It's really lovely. It's glassed in. Look at that. No, once you once you go into that room, you're in the pool. You have to stay outside of the room. No, there's no way of getting out. You get out one at a time. Hmm. Look at that little slip in the hall. My look at that. They all seem to be scrambling about in there. Well, no wonder. That pool, look at that. The water in that pool is risen like a glass in a drinking bottle. The water's just a little from the top. Nige, don't you think you've over, over, look at that. Oh, don't you think you've allowed a little too much water to run into that pool? Well, it's almost up to the top. How are those people going to breathe? They're getting pretty panicky looking. They can't even come out if they want to. No. You put the plug in it. Look at that. You put the plug in it. How do you know how long they've been swimming around in there? They're going to get a current and sink to the bottom. That's just what's happening. Look at that. She's going to graceful. Look at that like a leaf in a bottle. Oh, floating up. Oh, she must be dead. Why, that's a dead lady floating to the bottom. I thought people floated to the top. Look at that. Not a ghastly thing. Ugh. Ugh. Well, a funny shade of purple. She's floating to the bottom. Oh my lord. She looks like she's bubbly. Nudge, did you put the heater on under that? Oh, look at that. He's got the heater on. Ooh. A hot Asian blue swimming pool water soon. Oh, those people are going to be doing a jig. They can't come out. Can't. What do you mean? Oh, the door is stuck. I wonder. Well, that lady died rather uselessly, didn't she? Huh? Here comes another. Oh, they're swimming faster. It must be getting hotter in there. Nige, you can't find the plug? You can't... And you can't turn that off? Oh, isn't that terrible? Uh, the heater is jammed and it's going higher and higher. Look at that, it's like the flame under a Bunsen burner. Oh my lord, that really is terrible. Oh, those people are swimming faster and faster. Can one sweat in water? Look at him, he looks like he's sweating in there. Well, it must be getting so hot. Oh, my heart goes out to you, little people. I know. I can't. It's hopelessly impossible. No. The plug is stuck and we can't pull it out. And the heater. Oh, the flame in the heater is stuck too and we can't turn it off. Oh, I know it's going to boil. You're all going to die in there. 
Well, goodbye. Oh, I know you are. Isn't that terrible? I can't do a thing about it. Is it getting hot? Oh, they're all nodding. Look at that. They're sweating in the water. Oh, the poor thing. Poor thing. Why don't you drown yourself? Why don't you drown yourself? Stay under the water. Much easier than burning. Oh. I understand it's terrible to scald to death. Don't, don't let the water get... Well, if you let that heat... Yes, that's it. There are a couple. Just stay under. Oh, isn't that a pity? I bet that hot water is terrible to drown, man. Mm. Oh, dear. Well, Nige, no, you'll have to be careful next time. Yes, test that plug and test that heater. That's awful. What? I'll bet you've got 50 people today. Mm. You know, well, I know, but I think this has happened before. Now, you must be careful. You must be careful. No. No. No, no. Oh, you worked that plug loose? Oh, what does it matter now? They're all dead. Don't let them all out here. We don't want them floating around here. No. Nige, don't pull that plug. No. Nige, don't pull that plug. Now leave the leave, leave the plug in the pool. Leave it in the pool. Leave it in the pool. In the first place is hot there. We'll be dry. Ah! My, it'll carry. Sweep it along. Look at that. Nige, Nige, don't pull that plug. No! The mustard battle starts at quarter after. Yes, it starts at quarter after. Do we have everybody lined up for it? Does everybody have their mustard? Do you all have your mustard? Did you get it out of the jar? Get it out of the jar. Pick, pick your spot now, pick your spot. Well, I think probably, I don't know, the middle of the forehead. Shall we say the middle of the forehead? It's a ringer. If you're hit in the middle of the forehead, drop, you're dead. Yes. Hair doesn't count, hair doesn't count. Any place but the middle of the forehead. Okay, what time, what is it? 14 after, 14 after. Everyone has their mustard? All right. Mick, line up in a big crest. That's it. That's it. Now, for God's sake, let him have it. Let him have it. Foreheads. On the forehead. Whack. Swack. Mmm. Look at this. I did that. Swack. Mmm. Get it. Get it. Swack. Swack. Oh. Oh, it's whizzing by, it's whizzing by. Look at that, look at that. Ah, I did. Well, it really doesn't make much sense, does it? I'm shouting in here and you're in there. Come out of there if you want to hear what I'm doing. I've got to get that letter off to old Uncle Horace. He may not last much longer. Every little bit helps. Do you want to help? You help. But if you don't want to help, you go back into that other room, because you're a hindrance. Very well, dear old Uncle Hart. Oh, no, I can't touch. Look at that now. You made me put old in. You can't say dear old Uncle Horace. Dear Uncle Horace. Your perspicacity. Honey! How do you spell... Are there two C's in perspicacity?
All right. Oh, are there two C's in perspicacity? P E R S P I C A C I O. Binky, now hush. Come on, quiet. Go and use yourself. I'm trying to write a letter. Mm. P E R S P I C A C I T Y Perspicacity is a funny word. Do you suppose perspicaciousness is better? Honey? Is it perspicaciousness or perspicacity? Which sounds better? Cassidy. Very well. Perspicacity. Your perspicacity in understanding the lugubriousness of the... Honey? Lugubriousness. N U G U B R I O Binky Mother and Daddy are trying to spell lugubriousness. Why don't you listen, I'll tell you what. You go in, put on your miner's hat, the one with the little light in it. Go into that back room, take your pick and your shovel and start on the wall now go on go on in there yes i don't care someday we'll reach it someday we'll reach it lugubrious oh, lugubriousness your perspicacity and understanding the lugubriousness of the situation both Paul, oh dear, A P P. Don't go away each time. I'll have another word. A Paul's A P. How's a Paul's? Are there two P's and two L's, or one P and two L's, or one L, and two P, one L and two P. A P P A L S. That looks terrible. Both appalls and appeals to me. Oh dear, appeals. Is that the same? Yes, A-P-P-E-A-L-S. Mm. Dear Uncle Horace, your perspicacity and understanding the lugubriousness of my situation both appalls and appeals to me. Is that right, honey? Is that too much? You know Uncle Horace. Hmm? Oh, Binky's out in the back with the pick and the shovel. Oh, Binky! Binky! Oh, honey, go see. I'm trying to get this letter written. You know that. You just cannot write a letter at home. You gotta do it at elsewhere. Uh, yes. He's perfectly all right. Now, come on, help me with this. That old duff is gonna croak and we're not gonna get a penny. Now, come on, help me. You must be finished in there. You must be finished in there. Yeah. Binky. Binky, go back in there and use your pick and shovel. Yes, who knows, you may find a vein of iron. Who knows? Bankston! Did you hear me? Now you go back in there, use your pick and shovel, and you pick like the very devil. Yes, go in there and pick. We'll be in to join you as soon as we finish our letter to dear old Uncle Horace now. It's a very important letter. What about your future? 
You want to go to college, don't you? Well, go get your pick and shovel very busy. Hurry, put on your miner's hat. Put on the little helmet with a hat on it. That's it. Yes. Okay, honey. And, comma. Our little Binky. Should I say Binky or Binkton? I suppose I better say Binkton. Our little Binkton is ever so fond of you. Uh, I can't write anymore. Look at that. Pen dried up. Pen dried up. Honey, why don't you write him? He's your uncle. You've got a much nicer way about you. Yes, you can say, say what you mean, say what you mean. Dear old Uncle Horace, when you drop dead, leave it to us. Now you draw a little, draw a little line, draw a little line in your mind. From the throat, straight to the crotch. Okay, you draw your line, got your line drawn? Now take, take your razor. Now cut from the trachea. Straight down, straight, straight over the chest cavity, down the abdomen, right down there. All right. Now that wasn't too bad, was it? Okay, now lay the flat back. Lay that flat back. Both sides, both sides. Way back. Way back. Okay. Reach in now. Pump the heart. Pump the heart. Get a good grip on the liver. Hold a kidney. Hold a kidney. Now then. What would you like to take out? Anything you like. Take it out. Well, let's see. Take out the... Uh, the spleen. Now point to the spleen. No, it doesn't have to be. Bile is green. Spleen is spleen. Oh well, no, that's in the lower abdomen. Go on. Go get it. Go get it. Run. Run. Run with it. Run with it. Right. Now, this is known as vivisection. Mm -hmm. And the body? Well, that body is me. Now, be careful when you sew it up. Be careful when you sew it up. Okay. Start. Put the flaps back. Put those flaps back. Otherwise, I won't be able to eat a good dinner. Put those flaps back right. It's not tough. We'd better let a woman do the sewing. Uh, Germaine, you do the sewing. That's right. Tight, tight little stitches. And close. Put those stitches close, otherwise it'll liable to rupture. Put the stitches close. Now you've got them. Oh, a little intermingled. That's right. Doesn't feel too uncomfortable. You can use boulder cable stitches down the chest. Use cable stitches down the chest. That's right. <laughs> that tickle. That tickle. <laughs> All the way down. That's right. That's right. There. 
Now you see? That didn't hurt at all. Didn't hurt at all. Now tell me what you've learned. Have you learned anything? Have you learned anything at all? Because next time when you do that, you know, you have to make the little strips over from the lacing. Well, if you slash down from the trachea, right on down, right on down to the crotch, you can do it on any one of you. If you do it carefully, you can just lie there and talk. Lie there and talk. We can finger your lungs. Mm. You won't even know the difference. Isn't it a modern miracle? Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. Well, now let me tell you. You enter in. When you enter in from the left side, really, don't burrow around too much. No, you can't do that too much. If you do it too much, you're the... Well, they'll die, that's all. They'll just die. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing to be alarmed about. We can always get another one. But they may have a decent thought to contribute. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all for today. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye, class. I wonder if they understood anything that I was trying to get at. I wonder if I can move now. I wonder if I can move now. You know? I do feel just the tiniest little pain in my left shoulder. I wonder if it, I wonder if it's dangerous to let them open me up like that once a week. That's funny, sharp little needle pain. Oh, funny, sharp little needle pains every time I breathe in and out. Oh, terrible. Oh, I think it, oh, it may be the, uh, oh, they say that top starts, and then you, you can't get your breath, and it gets worse and worse, oh, oh, first your head feels, your head is all filled with blood, and you can't think. No, well, and maybe this is the last thought you'll ever have. And it gets worse and worse. Whirl it around, whirl it around. Spin that lazy Susan and everybody take what they want off it. Hurry, hurry, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. We're playing food roulette, food roulette. Yes, there's a poison declare on there. We have a poison declare on there, and somebody's going to get it. Now, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. We don't know which one is the poison declare. There are 130 on there. Spin, 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 the lazy Susan. Spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. Is everybody lined up? Everybody lined up to get their eclair. Spin it now. Spin it, spin it, spin Don't spin it so fast they whirl off. That way lies madness. Yes, that way lies dirty eclairs when they fall on the floor. Now, pick those up, pick those up. Three of them went on the floor. Did you see that three of those fell on the floor? It may have been the poison declare. That'll ruin our game. Our game will be ruined. Uh, come on now. It's whirling, it's whirling, it's whirling, it's whirling, it's whirling, it's whirling. Everybody get in the line. Everybody get in the line. I'll go first. Whee! I got my eclair. Ha, hoo, hee, ha. Okay, everybody. Next person, get your eclair. Grab it quick before it stops. Before it stops spinning. Oh, don't take two. You greedy thing. What, do you want to die? You want to die? You want to die? Huh? Oh, next one, next one, next one. All right. Line up now in a circle. Line up now in a circle. As soon as you've got your eclair, no, don't take a bite. Don't take a bite. No. That's 
spoils the game. That spoils the game. That spoils the game. Mm. Now, what? About fifty left. Fifty left. Fifty more. No, you can't all play. You can't all play. Look at that line. It stretches way down the road. Way down the road. People are so adventurous. Oh, people are adventurous now. I mean to tell you. Hurry up. Get in here and get your poison declare. Poison declare. Take your chances. Take your chances. Hurry, 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 Twelve left, twelve left, woo! Hurry, 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 Everybody in line, everybody in line, everybody in line. That's all. Last twelve people. That's all, that's all. Close the doors, close the doors, close the doors. Don't let them look, don't let them look. We'll get another round of poison declares. Everybody line up out here. And we will notify you when it's ready. Okay. Okay, everybody take a bite, everybody take a bite. Now listen, listen. When you take a bite, take a great big bite. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Oh. <coughs> the horseshoe crabs came out and peeked. Oh, and they peeked and they winked. Horseshoe crabs, big as fists. Yes, horseshoe crabs as big as fists kept along. Crept along and kept along, too. Uh, oh, those waves. Yes, those waves, dark waves, lowering clouds. Horseshoe crabs. It was all very, very timorous. It was almost sunset time. Sunset time. Mm. Sunset time at the beach, with the lowering clouds, very threatening. And everybody took out their bananas. Then up and down that beach to a swift marching song. Oh, we marched until the sand flew. And then, one after the other, vanished. Just vanished. Oh, it was miraculous. You never saw anything so miraculous. Vanished. Just up into a cloud of sand. There was a monster... A beach monster. Oh, and he used to frighten the little children. Well, yes, that was nice, but he used to frighten me. Oh, frightened me, yes. Why, I'd be reading a book there on the sand. Suddenly, up came a dark shadow with 18 heads. Yes, it was the monster. 